Hello, I'm Jake Memory from TechDocs, and this is an abbreviated um, screencast demonstration of some software that we have developed which uh, makes the conversion of Microsoft Word or legacy documents to the S1000D data modules um, incredibly easy um, and incredibly fast and efficient. Um, like I say, this is an abbreviated version. I have done a longer version that goes into much more depth um, and takes you right from the start, um, from creating the DMRL, which this program uses, um, to the generation of the, of the data modules. This is going to skirt over a lot of that, and I'm literally going to be showing you, how, you know, how the program works and what it outputs. Um, the original version is about 38 minutes long, and I'm hoping to keep this under 10 minutes. So, without further ado. Um, upon installation of our tool, it's a word add-in, so you get this uh, additional rib ribbon um, um, uh, tab up here. So if we click on that and click on the Word to S1000D button, we get this, um, this action pane come down the side here. What that's doing, it's now applied, um, it's now applied uh, a new template which gives us um, S1000D type, type, um, uh, type controls or element, uh, styles, should I say down here, so we've got some para zero titles, some steps, numbered list, ran lists, um, warnings, cautions and notes. So as I say, I'm going to move quite quickly through this. If you want uh, if you want to hear much more detail about all of this, go and have a look at the, um, uh, the, the, the longer version. So let's start tagging up our legacy data. So the first thing we have to do is to tell the program where the start and end of our data modules are. So we've highlighted the text. We're now going to double click on DM container and select the data module that we want. So electrical power description operation. So this is electrical power description of function in S1000D speed. So as you can see, what's happened is it's wrapped. It's wrapped the data module in this tag. Contained within the tag is the DMC. And we have the tech name and info name here. The D denotes that it's a descriptive module. If it were a P, it would denote that we'd selected procedural. Okay, now all we have to do is run down through um, through the module, uh, applying S1000D styles. So that is Parazera title. All of this is just paratext. That will be a random list. A couple of notes. Uh, that will be another para zero title, sub para one title, sub para two title, para text, sub para two, para text, again the same, text, sub para two. Now this document came um, it came from a readily available document online for an aerospace manual. This isn't in any way restricted, but um, but it did have to be run through some OCR software. So it's come across not too bad actually um, in comparison to a lot of OCR um, uh, documents or, or word documents that come through OCR software. So it's relatively clean, but you know some of the formatting is not very good as you can see. I'm just going to run down through here fairly quickly. Run list, para two. Run list, uh, sorry, para text. I find it difficult to talk and apply styles at the same time, so <laughs> I'm not gifted with uh, multitasking. Two. So excuse me if I go quiet as I'm running down through here. That was all part of the same man list. Let's just make sure we've got that. There we go. So this is obviously a descriptive module. We will do a procedural one in a second as well. I 
as you can see as we apply styles it actually starts to look more like an S1000D type PDF output as well in terms of the formatting which is useful. Now that's a table title, S1000D table title and the tables we don't have to worry about this is one of the, the, the huge benefits of this piece of uh, software we don't even have to tag that up and tell it it's a table it will just be converted into the Oasis CALS table format which uh, S1000D dictates that we uh, we need to have. Okay, so that's our first module done. Let's move on to our um, our procedural module. Okay, now the savvy of you will have noticed that this has nothing to do with the data module that we're actually uh, that we're actually selecting here maintenance practices this is a piece of computer equipment at the bottom and I have included that deliberately and I'll show you why in a second so DM container rudder maintenance practices flight controls rudder uh, this is operational test I do believe yes testing okay it's a procedural module so again it's wrapped that um, that that portion of text in um, in a tag giving us the DMC P for procedural, tech name and info name. Now we can ignore this as we did before because we don't need the title in the S1000D module that's taken care of by our tech name and info name. Um, we, we also don't need this introductory text I would argue with it being a procedural module. Now these two here are um, safety conditions that would go in the top of your procedural data module so we can tag them as so so we highlight the two warnings double click safety conditions as you can see that's wrapped um, the warnings in the safety tags now we'll just tell it that those two are warnings okay we can ignore this we can ignore equipment all this is self-generated for us in this 1000 so we don't need these headings now we've got some support equipment so what we do here highlight the piece of support equipment double click support equipment item and then we can highlight the name right click on support equipment item that's the nomenclature we can tell it that that's a quantity and in this case it doesn't have a part number but this is effectively where the uh, part number would be so we do the same again here So if we can get the whole lot, there we go. Nomenclature, quantity, and part number. Okay, and on to the actual procedure. So that will be a step one. This will be a step two. Step two, a warning. Step two. Step two. In fact, all of these now are step two. So we just highlight the lot. Step two. Okay. Okay. So graphics. Now, graphics we don't have to worry about whatsoever. The computer, that the the program will take care of um, of the graphics. It will tag them up for us um, in the XML when it comes across, and it will also save each graphic that it comes across in the Word document. It will save that as a JPEG for us in the same folder as the data modules and it will assign it um, a file name the same as the data module code but with an underscore figure one figure two or figure three as it appears in that um, in that container uh, of text so all we need to do is worry about the s1000d figure titles and again here we don't have to worry about that now this is what I was referring to earlier when I said this is a piece of, piece of computer equipment. It has nothing to do with uh, the, the rudder control test procedure. But I just wanted to illustrate how Legends worked, so I've just included it. Now, Legends, all we need to do is obviously we need to tell it it's a legend, so S1000D legend. And it's best if we put on the paragraph marks for this. Now, Obviously, when it comes across into S1000D, there are two different elements that depict the item number 
and the description and we don't have to tag up each one individually in the word document but what we do need to do is use a tab to, to, to separate them so we don't want any other tabs in there getting in the way so we can just delete this leading tab and given that we've already got a nice tab in there between the item number and the description that will come across perfectly for us and let's tag that up as a figure title okay so we're all tagged up now the next thing we want to do is obviously generate our data modules so when we click on this validate and build button what will happen is the, the word program the, the add-in will effectively validate our our application of the styles that we've that we've uh, we've run through and added so we know in 1000D for example that you can't have a note followed by a warning followed by a caution it has to be warning caution note um, and there are obviously many 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 other rules that S1000D schemas or DTDs dictate so we don't want to just go ahead and build this and it generate a load of XML and then when we open it in an editor it be a complete mess and not parse um, hence the reason this will do a, an initial validation against rules that are built into the S1000D workbench um, which minimizes um, any cleanup um, and to a large extent eliminates actually any cleanup required when it comes across into S1000D so let's just hit the hit the go button here and let it run a validation so we've also only got two data modules in here or two containers worth of text normally you know this, this could be um, this would be a much much larger list than this but you can see what it's done it's telling you it's validating the we uh, the um, uh, validating the, the word styles it tells you this one was a descriptive DM container um, it's counted one data module, zero graphics, and then this one um, it was a procedural DM container, uh, two graphics in this one and no tables. Um, and because they both passed the validation, we get the opportunity now to, um, to build the S1000D XML DMs. So as soon as we click OK, this validation window will continue to provide us with information about how it's uh, what it's doing line by line as it's building the XML. So let's let's go ahead and click it, and there we go. So uh, it tells us it's been converting the XREFs and DMREFs um, for this particular data module. Um, now this would be if we had some figure references in here which we can tag up in the Word document. Of course we can do that when it comes across into XML, into, you know, into S1000D. But if you had wanted to, um, to change some text in here that said refer to figure 1, we could have tagged that up um, and it would have come across with XREF tags you know, exactly as we need. So it can be a time saver as well. Um, it tells us it's been creating random lists, adding notes. Um, converting the word table to CALS format and finally writing the XML to the S1000D template and writing the ID status information such as the tech name, info name and breaking down the, uh, the data module code. So it's done that on both data modules. It's finished. So total number of containers in Word was two and total number of S1000D DMs created was two. Okay, so let's have a look and see what it's created. So if we go to the output folder, which is here, and there are our two data modules just created. So um, these are the two graphics that are um, that belong to this 320 data module. And as you can see, it's assigned the same data module code, um, but giving it, giving it an underscore figure one or figure two. Um, this can obviously help when um, uh, trying to work out where your figures belong um, and more often than not, you're going to get your figures created as CGMs anyway, so they might go off to an illustrator or something. So this just helps with that process of, um, of keeping everything in order. So let's open up the 042 and see what we've got. And here it is. All of our ID status information has been populated. Um, the, the data module code has been broken down. Um, we have tech name and info name. Um, now this information here, a lot of this has come from the template that we're using and if I just go back to 
to the Word document, that's because we're outputting the Airbus A400M, um, outputting in accordance with the Airbus A400M schema. Um, we're also working on some generic uh, S1000D 1.8, for example, which is SGML, um, but clients interested in that. But you know, this just proves that we can we can um, we can output to to almost any any kind of um, schema that you like, depending on your project requirements. So here's all our data. It's come across in paras as we liked, ran lists, notes. They're all tagged up properly. Obviously, we probably want to delete this initial note because that will be auto-generated. But as you can see, the cleanup is minimum. Um, RAN list items will come across as they should. Subparas all broken down properly. And here is our table in the CALS format. So we don't have to worry about the table, as we said. Um, again, we can probably delete table 1. Um, and that's all come across as we would expect. So, yeah, we'll save that. Let's have a quick look at the 320 module. Again, it parses straight away. We're in. Um, no errors have come up. Here is our support equipment that we individually tagged, and that's come across and been broken down for us into the necessary elements. There was no supplies, no spares. Safety conditions, if you recall, we tagged that up as uh, you know a separate block, um, and that's come across for us into the warnings section. Um, again, we can probably delete the trailing warning because it's an auto-generated warning. And here are our, our, our steps for the procedure. Now, if you remember, we I also included um, a figure which had nothing to do with the, um, the rudder uh, procedure just to demonstrate how the legends worked and as you can see this legend has come across been broken down into the term and the def elements just by using that tab delimiter that we did in the word document so as you can see this has been incredibly um, easy an incredibly simple way of converting your legacy word documents to s1000d with minimal cleanup minimal hassle, we just ran down through um, applying styles to the data. Now as I say, I know this is quite a quick run through, there is a much more um, in-depth demonstration of this um, of this software we've developed, the S1000D Workbench. Uh, there will be a link that will appear for you um, on the screen, so please by all means go and have a look at that and get in contact with us if you are interested in this product. Thanks a lot.